this is Nikki. Welcome back to my channel. Here today to talk to you guys a little bit about buying your first designer handbag. Okay guys, so you saved up a couple of paychecks, you're excited, you, you wanna invest in a designer product, something you've seen, maybe other people around with, you've seen celebrities, and you go in the store and now you've made a big mistake because you've picked up the wrong thing or you didn't you know do things beforehand and so i'm here to talk to you uh designer handbag virgins today and just give you my opinions and my ideas about what you should or shouldn't do when you're ready to spend this large amount of money you know unless you have a money tree growing in your backyard when you buy a designer product it is an event. It is something that you know you're thinking about beforehand and you're excited about after. And you want to make sure that you actually approach it from the right uh, stance and you think about certain things in advance. So a couple of things that I've learned along my journey in collecting designer products is one, please do your research. Um, you want to find out about these companies. What are their reputations? What are their quality issues? You know, do they have quality issues? Are they um, trendy? You know, what what are their what are their products like? And do they have good functionality in their products? Some designers they may sell a lot, but you know they're not selling good products. Or if they are, they're overpriced or whatnot. So do your research. Check into the bags that you're interested in and also look into alternatives. Um, I talked about a few dozen videos ago, I talked about alternatives to buying something like a Louis Vuitton or Prada bag and how you can find things like from a lower grade designer or a less expensive bag, maybe not necessarily lower grade, but just less expensive. Um, and you don't have, you can get the same look without having to pay the money, you know, I talked about Louis Vuitton Speedies and how everybody makes a doctor bag. So if you do your research, you find, oh, maybe Dooney and Burke has a doctor bag I can afford, or maybe my cores, or maybe Coach, or somebody like that, Calvin Klein maybe, has a bag I can get that doesn't cost an arm and a leg and a foot, you know, to, to, uh, to acquire. So number one, always do your research, check around and see what you can find first. That includes locations to purchase the bag. I am avid collector of TJ Maxx, you know, Ross Marshalls, those type of stores. I will gladly go in there and, ooh, look, there's a Michael Kors bag I don't have. Or, ooh, look, there's a Coach bag I don't have. And I found it there, not necessarily in the Coach store. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is the headache factor. That's what I call it anyway. How much of a headache is it to take care of this bag? Um, for example, leather, soft leather versus Safiana leather versus natural leather, treated leather, naked leather, you know, like the naked Vachetta of the Louis Vuitton. Um, which one am I willing to deal with? You know, if you get the Safiana leather, you're kind of carefree. You can kind of kick that bag around and it's really not going to show any damage. But if you get a natural leather, like a soft, um, buttery leather, and there's all different types of grades, you might have to be more careful with that one. That one may stain easier or it may get color transfer easier. So are you willing to deal with the headache? Are you willing to, to pay attention to the weather? Oh, I can't take my, you know, monogram or my Damir Zur, uh, speedy outside because it's raining outside and it's going to damage my leather. Some people, they don't mind that. Oh, I'll carry a bag, you know, I'll carry a plastic bag with me and, and it will protect the bag. Me on the other hand, eh, I don't really have a lot of that type of leather in my collection because I don't like the headache. So if that's you, pay attention to those type of things and also to repairs. What are the warranties? You know, it can be a headache when you're trying to get your bag repaired and you're sending it away for two months. You know, oh, it's a two month waiting time on repairs. Do you really want to deal with that? Um, make that decision before you buy this bag. It's, it's an investment piece and you want to make sure that you're ready for it. So the next thing I want to talk about, and I have a couple examples here to show you is color and pattern. Okay. So like I said before, we're, you know, you may not be rich. You may not be able to buy designer products all the time. Do you really want to buy a bag that doesn't, it looks nice. It, it's, it's pretty, it's a great color, but 
you don't really have a lot in your wardrobe that that bag can go with. For example, I have two bags here that I would consider my most um, outrageous colored bags in my collection. I love them, I use them when appropriate, but I only have two versus 10. Um, and one of them is my Ralph Lauren Newberry Double Zip Satchel. And this color, guys, you can see it's, you know, it's blinging. It's, it's like this very, very hot blue, bright color. Gorgeous in the springtime. Gorgeous to just carry, you know, if I'm wearing a neutral out with outfit, you know, all black, all white, beige, something like that. I can carry this bag and it just pops. But not always. Can I always carry that bag to certain situations? Maybe not because it is a bright, bright color. So if that was going to be my only designer bag or that was the first bag I'm buying, that may not be the best investment because you're not able to always carry it versus a bag like my Michael Kors uh, Jet Set Zip Top Tote. This is in the color Dark Dune. You notice that this is a very neutral, very low medium tone color here. This goes with everything. So it's a neutral tone bag. Black bags are a good neutral tone. Brown bags, white bags if you're brave <laughs> because white bags, you know, you set them down and oops, you set them in the grass. Now you've got a grass stain. So be careful with that. But black, brown, maybe even a navy bag may be a safe neutral to invest in. If you're gonna spend hundreds of dollars, why not get something that goes with every outfit in your closet? Another example of that would be my, my Rhea, I forget what this is, the Michael Kors Rhea, R-H-E-A, Michael Kors Rhea. Beautiful golden color here, and it's gold hardware, and it's just like, you know, I'm sure it's jumping off the screen right now. It's so bright. But again, one bag, one little pop of color. It's not a big bag. It wasn't overly expensive at all. So I'm okay with having that versus, you know, if I'm going, if you're going all the way to the top and you're, my first designer bag's gonna be a Gucci. Okay, if you wanna spend $1,100 on a yellow bag that only goes with two outfits or three outfits, then fine. But if this is your first time, I would suggest investing in a neutral tone color or a neutral pattern. Um, there's some bags that have the crazy sparkles all over them and it has zigzags and it has, you know, multiple prints and everything and it has fur on it and everything. Maybe not the best investment for your first bag. Get something that is very uh, comfortable for you to wear. And finally, my last little piece of advice for you uh, bag virgins out there, be realistic about what you're buying. Um, be understand that is this really going to work for you? Are you really going to be able to use this bag? Is it worth it? Um, there is a small clutch purse by Louis Vuitton called the Eva clutch. And I see a lot of videos and things about it. It is a beautiful little piece. It is about, you know, a little bit longer than my notebook here. And it's quite expensive being that it's Louis Vuitton. It's quite expensive. But if that were my first bag, I would probably, or thinking about buying a bag, I would say that probably wouldn't be my first bag. And it's because I'm a big bag person. The bags I'm using now are pretty big. Am I going to be able to get my, you know, 600, you know, if you buy it brand new, $600 use out of this little tiny bag? No, could I take that same $600 and buy a big tote because that's what I use? Yes. So think about your realistic expectations about the bag you're about to buy. You don't wanna get something that is so awkward in your collection, but it's Gucci or it's Prada and I'm so happy to have it, but it just sits there because it doesn't have a purpose in your life. So think about the purpose and make sure you understand that you're making a huge investment and above all things, the last little tidbit I can give you is get what you like. Okay, uh, trends are great and everything, but if it doesn't fit in my life, I really could care less what the trend is. So guys, please do leave your comments below on what you would tell a bag virgin to do or not do, or your you know, lessons learned along the way. And you know, understanding that collecting designer products, you don't wanna learn your lessons after you've spent the money. You wanna you know, learn these things in advance. I'm glad to have helped anyone who found any kind of um, 
you know, enlightenment from my video here today. Please be sure to share, like, subscribe, comment, and everything. I love the support I get from my followers. And I will be back with you guys here soon with another video. Bye-bye.